Welcome to Economics 1723 Capital Markets. This is the lecture module for lecture 13 on earnings based valuation. Now, uh, we've been talking in the past about a valuation formula, the Gordon Growth Model, which relates stock prices to dividends and gr the growth of the firm. And the simple way to remember the formula is D over P equals R minus G. This says that companies with higher discount rates have higher dividend yields and hence lower prices, and companies with faster growth have lower dividend yields and thus higher prices. So the formula relates prices to dividends and growth as well as discount rates. Now dividends are paid out by corporations from their profits, their earnings. So what we may want to do is to look deeper to understand what it is that enables a corporation to pay and subsequently grow dividends and thus justify a high stock price. In a steady state, uh, by the very definition of a steady state, all variables are growing at the same rate. So dividends, earnings, and prices must all be growing at this common rate, G. So the Gordon growth model takes G as a given number. What we now want to do is calculate G in terms of more fundamental features of the firm. Well, where does growth come from? It comes from investment. So to calculate the growth of the firm's dividends and earnings, we're going to need to estimate two things. First, how much does the firm invest? And secondly, how profitable are those investments? How much will the firm earn on the new investments it makes? So what we'll do is we'll assume that the firm retains and reinvests B dollars for each dollar of earnings. B is a ratio known as the plowback or retention ratio. We'll also assume that the firm earns a constant number of dollars for each dollar invested, and this will, we'll call the return on equity, or ROE. Uh, this is an accounting concept, but for the present purpose, we can think of it as new earnings divided by retained earnings. Well, given those two numbers, B and ROE, we can calculate the growth rate in equation one here as the product. The growth rate G is the product of the investment rate and the return on investment. And to understand that equation, we can rewrite it. G is just new earnings divided by old earnings. It's the incremental earnings created by investment divided by the, 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 uh, the old earnings. And uh, that, in turn, is retained earnings divided by old earnings, which is the investment rate B, times uh, new earnings divided by retained earnings. In, th in other words, the dollars of new earnings created by any level of retention, and that's ROE. So G is B times ROE. Now, uh, earnings which are not reinvested are going to be paid out as dividends. So dividends equals earnings times 1 minus b. This 1 minus b is the payout ratio. Now, of course, what this means is that if the firm is reinvesting more, that by itself is going to reduce dividends today. As b goes up, d goes down. But on the other hand, the growth rate of dividends, g, is increased by reinvestment. So here's an example from Bodie, Kane and Marcus. They have this company called Growth Prospects, which we've discussed. And the black line corresponds to a plowback or retention ratio of 60%, and the blue line to one of 40%. You can see that uh, with a higher reinvestment rate, dividends are lower for the first roughly 12 or 13 years, and they uh, are higher subsequently. Now, putting this all together, we can, we, can, we can put this into the Gordon model and obtain a new valuation formula. Okay, so we've seen that reinvestment reduces dividends in the short run, raises them in the long run. What is the net effect on firm value? For this, we can use the Gordon growth model. So we have P equals, excuse me, P equals D over R minus G. That's just the Gordon formula. But D is earnings times 1 minus B. And then we have on the bottom R minus ROE times B. That's what growth is. OK, so you can see that B enters um, on both the top and the bottom. And it's a fight between the effect on the top and the effect on the bottom. Now we can uh, rearrange this formula if we just divide by E. We get P over E, the price earnings ratio, is 1 minus B 
times R minus ROE times B. Or we can rearrange that formula to write it as R equals 1 minus B times the earnings to price ratio plus B times ROE. The rate of return, or equivalently the discount rate, is a weighted average of two things, the earnings yield and investment profitability. The more the firm is reinvesting, the more important profitability is. If the firm isn't reinvesting, profitability doesn't matter because it's simply paying everything out. Okay, now let's think about this formula a little bit more carefully. Um, so here, here, here's some things to think about. If ROE equals R, so then we have R on the left and the right. In that case, P, E over P equals R, or equivalently P equals E over R. Now, why is that? Well, the firm has invested to the point where um, its return on new investment exactly equals its cost of capital. So um, the, the uh, cash flow it's generating is uh, uh, as a fraction of price exactly equal to its cost of capital. Or we could say that the price is current earnings um, exactly uh, discounted at rate R. Now, um, if ROE is less than R and B is positive, so look at this case up here, if ROE is less than R, then for this averaging to work out, E over P must be greater than R, which would imply that P is less than E over R. Why is that? Well, in that case, the firm is destroying value, if you like, by reinvesting at a rate of profit that's too low, that's not as high as the cost of capital. And so that's going to lower the value of the firm relative to the benchmark E over R. On the other hand, if ROE is greater than R, and again B is greater than zero, then uh, if we have this number on the right being greater than this on the left, so in order for the averaging to work out, E over P must be less than R, and in that case the price is greater than E over R. In that case, the firm has profitable investment opportunities which uh, will allow it to uh, uh, degenerate a value for shareholders that exceeds current earnings uh, divided by R. Now, um, this is getting a little bit ahead, but when we talk about um, uh, long-term bonds, if you have infinitely um, lived bonds that simply pay E forever, uh, those infinitely lived uh, uh, bonds would be worth the, the amount they pay divided by their interest rate or their discount rate. So that's what this P equals E over R is referring to, a situation where the uh, the firm is valued equivalently to one which just pays out E forever. Okay, uh, now finally, uh, um, a final question is what happens to valuation as B increases? Well, uh, you know, that is going to depend on uh, whether uh, ROE is uh, greater than R or less than R. Basically, if ROE is greater than R, then reinvesting increases firm value because the reinvestment is profitable, it earns more than the cost of capital. On the other hand, if ROE is less than R, then increasing B lowers firm value. And finally, if ROE equals R, then um, you, you can see just by plugging in here that, the, the, that B will cancel out and B will have no effect in that special case where ROE equals R. Okay, so um, as a, as a, um, a you know, what comes out of this um, framework is the statement that firms with low profitability should invest less, firms with high profitability should invest more. Um, you might also think that in the very long run, as firms keep investing, um, they'll exhaust their, their um, investment projects that have ROE greater than R, and in the very long run, then we might expect to see ROE equal R. Um, however, that takes us really into the theory of investment, which is beyond the scope of this course. So I'm not here going to try to make strong statements about the determination of, of B in practice. Um, if you take corporate finance, you'll certainly learn more about that. Okay, so uh, the bottom line is we've derived another form valuation formula. Um, 
And, uh, you know, you can think of it in this way, P over E is related to payout on the top and the bottom, and uh, whether 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 retention or payout is, is uh, increasing value or lowering it depends on the balance of R and ROE. Or you can also work with this equivalent version, which is often an easier thing to remember and, and uh, work with. So hopefully you see that there are more economic insights here than we got from the Gordon formula, because dividends and growth rates are replaced by more fundamental features of the firm, its earnings, its uh, retention or, or plowback ratio, and its ROE. So just to relate this to some data, if you look in Bodie, Kane and Marcus, uh, chapter 18, uh, you'll see evidence that industries with new investment opportunities, such as software, have a faster growth and a higher PE ratio than industries with scarcer investment opportunities, such as electric utilities. So hopefully that gives you some feel uh, for the way in which this plays out in practice. Thank you.